In this video, we're going to look at the sp3 hybridization present in methane and ethane. Now let's start with methane, so that's CH4. If I want to draw a dot structure for methane, I would start with carbon and its four valence electrons. And then we'd put hydrogen around that. Each hydrogen has one valence electron, so we go ahead and draw in our hydrogens with one valence electron. And that gives us the Lewis dot structure. Right? Usually you see it drawn like this, with carbon with its four bonds to hydrogen around it like that. And in methane, all of these bonds are equivalent in terms of things like bond length and energy. And so the four valence electrons that carbon brought to the table over here, let me go ahead and, and highlight those four valence electrons, those should be equivalent. And if we look at the, the electron configuration for carbon, uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. It's 1s2, so I go ahead and put in two electrons in the 1s orbital. 2s2, I go ahead and put in two electrons in the 2s orbital. And then 2p2, and so I'm assuming you already, you're, you already know your electron configuration, so it would look something like that. If we look at those four valence electrons on our, on our orbital notation here, that would be these four electrons here, the valence electrons in the outer shell. And if I look at this, this implies that carbon would only form two bonds because I have these unpaired electrons right here and everything's of different energies. And so what we see from the dot structure and, and, and experimentally doesn't quite match up with the electron configuration here. And so to explain this difference, Linus Pauling came up with the idea of hybridization. And so the first thing that he said was you could, uh, you could go ahead and take out one of these electrons in the 2s and promote it up to the, uh, the p orbital here. So let me go ahead and show that. So we've moved one of the electrons up to the 2p orbital. So we're in the excited state now. And now we have the opportunity for carbon to form four bonds. However, those electrons are not of equivalent energy. And so Linus Pauling said, let's do, uh, let's do something else here. Let's go, ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and promote the 2s orbital. All right, so we're going to take this s orbital and we're going to promote it in energy. And we're going to uh, take these p orbitals and, and demote them in energy. So we're going to lower those p orbitals like that. So we have our p orbitals here. All right, and these had uh, one electron in each of them. But we're going to hybridize them. So this is no longer going to be an s orbital. It's going to be an sp3 hybrid orbital. This is no longer going to be a p orbital. It's going to be an sp3 hybrid orbital. And same with these. Right? So the idea is you're taking some of the s character and some of the p character, and you're hybridizing them together into brand new orbitals. And since you're taking this from one s orbital and three p orbitals, right, you're, we're doing this using one s orbital and 3p orbitals, we call this sp3 hybridization. So this is sp3 hybridization. We create four new hybrid orbitals. And now we have what we're looking for because now we have four unpaired electrons, right? So carbon can form four bonds now and they're equal in energy. So that's the idea of hybridization. All right, let's think, about, let's think about the character or the shape of this new hybrid orbital. Well, we know that an s orbital is shaped like a sphere, right? So we're, we're taking one of those s orbitals here, so one s orbital. And we know that a p orbital is shaped like a dumbbell, right? So we're taking three of these p orbitals here. So one of these s orbitals and three of these p orbitals, and then we're going to hybridize them together. And when that happens, uh, it turns out the, the shape of the new hybrid orbital you get has this large frontal lobe here like this, and then a smaller back lobe back here like this. So we're going to make four of these. Right, so once again, we have four sp3 hybrid orbitals, and each one of these hybrid orbitals is going to have an electron in it. Right, so we can see that each one of these sp3 hybrid orbitals has one electron in there like that. And, uh, and so the final orbital, the final hybrid orbitals here uh, contain 25% s character. Let me go ahead and write this down here. So 25% s character and 75% p character in this new hybrid orbital. Once again, that's because we started out with one s orbital and three p orbitals for our hybridization. All right, let's go back to, let's go back to methane. And, uh, and let's go ahead and, and draw in a picture because now we know that this carbon is sp3 hybridized. So let's go ahead and draw a picture of that hybridized carbon here. 
Right, so we're going to go ahead and draw in our carbon, and we know that it has four sp3 hybrid orbitals. And once again, when we draw the orbitals, we're going to ignore the smaller back lobe here so it doesn't confuse us. So we go ahead and draw in, here's one of our orbitals for carbon, so that's an sp3 hybrid orbital. Here's another sp3 hybrid orbital, here's another one, and then finally a fourth one. Alright, so let's go back up here to this picture. Because right, once again, we need, to, uh, we need to show that each of these hybrid orbitals has one valence electron in it. So I can go ahead and put in my one valence electron right, in each of my hybrid orbitals like that. So here's our valence electron. If we're talking about methane, right, so carbon is bonded to four hydrogens. Each hydrogen right, has, an, has an unhybridized s orbital, and each hydrogen has one electron in that. So I'm going to go ahead and, and sketch that in. Let's go ahead and use blue here. All right, so here's an unhybridized s orbital. I'm going to go ahead and draw these in, so an unhybridized s orbital. Uh, each one of these unhybridized s orbitals for hydrogen has one valence electron. So I'm going to go ahead and put in those one valence electrons in here like that. So same for here, and then finally for here. And so this is just, this is just one picture of the methane molecule. So this is hydrogen, All right, these are all the hydrogens right here like that. All right, let's think about, um, let's think about the uh, this bond that we formed right here. So here we have an overlap of orbitals, right? An overlap of an sp3 hybrid orbital from carbon with an unhybridized s orbital from hydrogen here. And so this is a head-on overlap, right? So we're sharing, we're sharing electrons here in this head-on overlap. And a head-on overlap in chemistry is called a sigma bond, right? So this is a sigma bond sigma bond here, a head-on overlap. And this happens three more times in the methane molecule, right? So here's a head-on overlap, here's a head-on overlap, and here's a head-on overlap. And so we have a total of four sigma bonds in the methane molecule. So a single bond here is represented, we're, 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 instead of saying a single bond now, we're saying it's, it's also can be called a sigma bond, so this head-on overlap. Let's look, at, uh, let's look at the ethane molecule now. So for ethane, we'll go ahead and draw that in. So ethane would be C2H6, right? So we have two carbons. So let's go ahead and draw in those two carbons. And then six hydrogens. So we put in our six hydrogens around there like that. All right, when we're thinking about hybridization, We've just seen with methane that a carbon atom with four single bonds will be sp3 hybridized. All right, so I go back up to here, all right, this carbon right here, all right, four single bonds, it's sp3 hybridized. We can use that same logic and apply it to ethane here. Each of the carbons in ethane has four single bonds. So each carbon in ethane is sp3 hybridized. So we go ahead and put sp3 hybridized here. So let's go ahead and draw the picture with the orbitals. All right, so let's get some more room. If each carbon is sp3 hybridized, that means each carbon is going to have four sp3 hybrid orbitals. So I can go ahead and sketch in uh, one carbon. Right, once again, I'm ignoring the back lobe. All right, one carbon with four sp3 hybrid orbitals. And we know the other carbon is also sp3 hybridized. So I can sketch in four sp3 hybrid orbitals for this one too. So here's my four sp3 hybrid orbitals for this carbon. All right, in terms of electrons, let's go ahead and put in our electrons here. So this, uh, let's see, there's one electron in this orbital, one electron in this orbital, one electron in this orbital, one electron from this carbon. And then for this other carbon, right, so there's one electron in this orbital, one electron in this orbital, one electron in this orbital, and one electron in this orbital. And then we can go ahead and put in our hydrogens, right? So we know each hydrogen has an unhybridized s orbital with one valence electron. So I can go ahead and do that and uh, draw in the rest of our hydrogens. So that's four hydrogens, five hydrogens, and then six hydrogens like that. All right, we just said that a sigma bond is a head-on overlap of orbitals, right? So here we have a head-on overlap of orbitals, uh, the bond between the two carbons. And then, of course, all of these are two. So when we count all of those up, right, that's four, five, six, and seven. So there are seven sigma bonds in the ethane molecule. So seven sigma bonds here. And we can go up here to this dot structure and, uh, and, and, and look at them again, right? So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. Seven sigma bonds. 
Let's focus in on the bond between the two carbons now. So, uh, so this sigma bond right in here, right? so that's a sigma bond. And there's free rotation about this sigma bond. So if you can imagine, if you can imagine rotating around this bond, so these, these carbons can rotate in space, and that's going to give uh, different conformations. So you can have different conformations of the ethane molecule, which is in later videos. All right, so you have free rotation about sigma bonds. All right, let me go ahead and write that because that's pretty important. So free rotation about, about sigma bonds. And then the last thing I wanted to point out about the ethane molecule here is the bond length. All right, so the length between this carbon and this carbon. So this bond length in here turns out to be approximately 1.54 angstroms. So you'll see slightly different values in different textbooks. But uh, we'll say it's approximately this value. And the reason we want to, we want to know that is we're going to compare this carbon-carbon bond length to the bond length in some other molecules in some later videos.